Okay, so today we're talking about citing sources. And the two sources that we're focused on for this Sea Creature Resource Project are books and websites. Um, for most of you, you were able to find at least one book that had your sea creature in it, which is great because then we can use that as a resource. And the, the key things that we're going to look at are making sure you have a book title, okay, the title of the book, which is usually found right on the cover, okay, and I've got an example right here. This is a book that I did with my class a couple of years ago, so you can just look and see it's called the Setamocha Animal Book, okay. You want to make sure that you underline that title. Because when you're writing the title of a book, you've got to underline it. Okay, and you'll see it's also underlined right up there on the anchor chart. Okay, and then you've got to write the author's name. Now, in this case, the author would be uh, third and sixth grade students at Sedimocha Elementary. If I had written it myself, it would be Jessica Dunton. Okay, um, so you've got to make sure. Usually, you can find that on the cover. Sometimes, you have to open up to the title page or even the copyright page to find that information. Um, and those are some of the text features that we've been, that we've been studying. Um, and those are, again, those are set up right over there if you need to take another look at those, okay, on the other side of the wall where the bookshelf is. All right, um, and then you want to be able to find the date. Okay, we usually can find the date right on the copyright page. Okay, and for my copyright information, it says copyright information. But it usually looks like a bunch of little text like that in the beginning of the book, and there's usually a date in there. So in this case, it's 2013. And then the page number, whatever page number you found the information on. So in this case, I used a tab, and we've been using tabs to kind of keep track of our information. And I put it on a page. This was actually a nonfiction um, piece, an informational piece on fish, okay, that Spencer did. And he wrote about a few different kinds of fish. And when he did that, he, he actually cited his source down here, which was really fantastic. Okay, and there is actually a format, but we're not going to worry about that. I just want to make sure you can find the information. Because remember, when we get ready to study biomes in a few weeks, you're going to really need to know how to find information and where you got it from. You've got to be able to tell me where you got it from. You can't just say, oh, I just got this. But, you know, it's, this is how it is. So you want to make sure you're, you're tabbing that. And if, if I were going to use some piece of information on this page about fish, I would say page 7. All right, and I just want you to be able to write that down um, in your, on, your, on your card. And we talked about the, the different cards. On the back of all the cards is where your sources go, okay? And Lucas and Abby uh, were very, very, very kindly let us use theirs as an example here so we could kind of see um, what they had done to set up. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't find blobfish in any of our books, so we have to keep looking for that. But I did book sources up here for you. Remember, if you were to take that flip book and open it right up, there's your cover. And you've always got a source on this side for where you got this piece of information. Right? And then if you take it here and match it, you've got the source for the picture. So this gives you some really great examples of how to write your sources out. And I have the book source here. I've written it a number of times because I use that book a lot. All right? And then you've got uh, the information and then on the white pages are your picture pieces. Okay, so if you're having trouble matching it up, you can come up here and I'll help you out and show you where you are in your flipbook. Okay, and also over here to support you, um, where you have your I can find facts about sea animals and put them in my own words. I wrote down which, car which color card is what. So yellow is your description of what it looks like. Most of you have already completed that. Orange is where they live. Okay, green is what they eat, and then pink is your interesting facts. All right, so that way, if that's easier for you to follow, you're certainly welcome to use that board instead. But both of those boards should be helpful to you when you're trying to figure out how to, how to put this together. So that's the book. Now, as far as a website goes, sometimes websites are a little bit more um, tricky to find this information on. The two key things that you want to find on a website are the title, of whatever you're reading, most websites have a title of some sort, okay? In this case, the title was, What Do Blobfish Eat? Okay, and so that's, that would be our title, and that would be what um, Lucas wrote right here on the back of his card. We used an article, What Do Blobfish Eat? Okay, and then sometimes authors, believe it or not, are really hard to find on web pages. 
Sometimes you can find them at the top. We actually had to go to a second page for this one under a, a subheading. <laughs> 14 Blobfish Facts for Kids, and Lucas could have even used that as his title if he wanted to. But look, it was in teensy tiny writing, way, way down. So I helped, I helped Lucas see if it'll give us any view of this or not. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Ooh. Okay, so it was Navajo Code Talkers Admin. That was the only name we could find, and it's probably a screen name, but we used it because it's the only thing we could find. And so when Lucas put on here he put that as the author because that's all he could find so sometimes you're gonna have to write no author if you you gotta look around though a little bit on those web pages they don't come easily and sometimes you can find them if you scroll down to the way bottom alright this one we were lucky there was a date right up top here beside the author alright which was January 1st 2015 and look Lucas did a nice job January 1st 2015 he got the date right on there Sometimes, though, I'm telling you, dates are really hard to find on web pages. If you can't find it up top, a lot of times I'll scroll all the way down to the very bottom, and you can find it. Sometimes on the bottom, sometimes there's no date on there. So you just have to write no date. Okay, but, but you should write that so that you, so that you know. Um, I'm going to see. I did some examples here. So, for example... This reference.com, what do clownfish eat? There was no author that I could find, but I did find a date. 2017. This one here for my source, animalstime.com, clownfish facts for kids. I couldn't find an author or a date, and I looked. But make sure you write no author and no date if that's the case, so that I know you, you tried. Don't just write, oh, there was nothing there, I don't know. Okay? But if those things are there, please make sure you capitalize them. Okay, just like I've done in the examples up front there to help you out. Um, and then the other thing that's really important for you to have with a website is the .com. Okay, you have to say which website it was. So if it was blobfish.com, right, or clownfish.com, or references.com, whatever it is, you've got to kind of just say where it was, because if we have the website name and the article title, we can do two things. We can go back and find the article again, which is why we cite sources in the first place, to be able to go find it and see where it came from, okay? And the other thing we can do if we have these two pieces of information, as you get older, it's not so important in third grade, but as you get into high school and even you know, off to college, a lot of times your teachers will ask you to have a certain format. And there's actually websites you can put this information into and it will do it for you. So you actually don't need to learn that piece right now, but you do have to know how to locate this information. All right, so those are the key pieces that I wanted to really talk to you about with citing sources. And of course, once you find some good information, you put the information in your words. You do not take it directly from the book or the website because that's like stealing. That's like taking someone else's words and using it as your own. You can't do it, all right, um, for a lot of reasons. But you just think of it, it's like stealing. It's, a, it's not a good thing to do. So that's why our two targets today are I can cite my source, Right? I can say where my stuff came from, and you can use those anchor charts to help you up there. And I can find facts about sea animals and put them in my own words. Those are the things that you're working on. So I'm going to shut this off, and I'm going to ask you if you have any questions.